Welcome to the Real Comic Heroes Podcast. Your adventure into the world of comic book movies starts here. Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another adventure of the Real Comic Heroes Podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Patrick. And uh, it's still 1999. This year will not end. That's right. I guess this millennia will not end. (laughs) Good Lord. Yeah, we're here for uh, kind of what sort of started us all off with uh, James Bond. We had him early on. That's right. We got him in The World Is Not Enough and uh, replaced that name with My Patience Was Not Enough. But (laughs) yeah, a little little, little flavor of what's to come, I guess. Oh my gosh. I will give them credit. They did get straight to the point. Okay. Like, I was shocked at how quickly, like, this started. Okay. Like, I thought there'd be more, like... It's interesting, because it is one of those that the the cold open is directly effect- tied to the, the story moving forward. It's not just yeah. a random action, you know, adventure thing. It's And mm-hmm. it's one of the longest openers at 14 minutes, yeah. which... <laughs> I didn't notice going into it, but then it's like, oh yeah, it's it, you know, keeps going. And um, but uh, before we get to all that, any history with this one? Not at all. Okay. Never saw it. Never on TV or any. No, nothing? I mean I knew it yeah. from Denise Richards being in it. The reputation, yeah. But at this point, I was out of the Bond universe. Yeah. Um, I never re- honestly past Goldeneye, I don't think yeah. I ever paid attention to it. Right. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's the Austin Powers effect. I, mm. I don't know. This was a weird one because I I do not remember when I first saw this. And the more I watched it, I was like, I don't remember this scene. I don't remember this scene. There were certain things that stuck out to me. And like I know that I've done Bond, you know, complete rewatches of the whole franchise. I know I've done that even within the past, I don't know, five years. Cause I've listened to podcasts like uh, uh, James bonding with Matt Gorley and, and Matt Myra. And I, so I know I've gone through the entire franchise to follow along with that show. And the guys over on star Wars minute, they also covered um, all the bond movies and their like Patreon show. So maybe I didn't rewatch it for that more recently, but, watching this it was like like i said there were a few key things that that i know i'd seen and were were memorable to me but i I feel like i've only seen this movie like twice three times now you know um it was so foreign to me and i remember vividly uh my dad and i went to see the previous bond movie the uh tomorrow never dies and i would have thought that that would have made us like, oh, let's go see the next one together. But I, I guess we missed this one. I, I don't know. So I maybe I saw it at home, you know, on a VHS release when it came out, you know, back in probably 2000 at that point. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. This is a weird one that like I know I've seen before, but it must have been so long ago or like I said, a part of uh, uh, a, a franchise wide rewatch. And I just maybe just you know, checked it off the box and, and watched it. And, and I don't know, but, uh, so it was interesting going through this with essentially fresh eyes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I felt the weird thing is I felt, I knew I'd never watched it, but yeah, I knew what was coming every single like <laughs> mo- moment of this movie. Okay. Like down to, uh, like the, uh, romance throughout the movie and, yeah. um, Money Penny and uh, or not Money Penny M, uh, and uh, okay, even like I don't know, like this whole movie just felt like a Mad Libs of James Bond. Okay, like it was just like pick your own adventure, like all the stereotypes of James Bond movies. Just okay, like the writers just picked and choose like randomly. <laughs> like I don't know, like it, it's forgettable. Like. Yeah, I, re- I had to rewatch it this morning because I'm okay. like, crap, I don't remember. Like, <laughs> like there's parts of the movie I was just like, 
nothing. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. this thing is so long. It, it felt long. Um, see, and I, I, like I said, I basically went into it fresh. And so that to me was exciting. So as I'm watching it, totally enjoying everything. Um, definitely got to like the middle section where I feel like we could cut half an hour, 20 minutes out of this movie for sure. Um, but overall, like totally enjoyed the movie. And, uh, so it was an odd experience to 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 know this movie by reputation, mm-hmm. you know, and and I I had the same thought like oh it's a forgettable movie other than like it's the one with Denise Richards that's kind of what you know <laughs> yeah. how I refer to this movie you know so, Christmas Jones yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, totally realistic nuclear physicist or whatever the hell <laughs> I I did didn't mind her in this movie she's no worse than uh, really? she's no worse than like jill st john from uh diamonds are forever you know like in the bond like franchise she's not the worst you know bond really? lady. i don't Man, think maybe so. it's been a while I, it felt like i was like watching a, like a freaking cardboard box out there <laughs> like it was just like she was like cue card cue card i i Live. it doesn't it probably doesn't help <sighs> that her in this movie you're comparing her to sophie marceau who yeah. nails every scene she's in you yeah. know so like it was almost like zero magnetism between okay. the two. Hmm. it was weird at the end where they're yeah. like doing the bond thing and i'm like sure i had no inkling of mm-hmm. any kind of sultry like connection yeah. between these two at all sure and it was that's, just like that's fair. ham-fisted. I was yeah, like, yeah. what? <laughs> just, like, che- just checking boxes. Uh, yeah. It was like, oh, you know, Bond got away. They got to sneak uh-huh. a peek at him while he's yeah. getting busy. Let's check and it on Bond. I was just, uh, I don't know. It was just so yeah. tired. Like, yeah. I was bored. Yeah. Okay. But this whole movie kind of just got me off. Of, like, I just, after watching it, I was just like, you know, not a good mood. Wow. Okay. <laughs> like, I okay. did not like this yeah. movie. Okay. <laughs> I felt like I would have rather watched Austin Powers again. <laughs> I was like, this is just, I don't know. It's paint by numbers to me at this point. Okay. Okay. So fair enough. But I did enjoy the opening, the yeah. cold opening. I thought it was interesting when you get the, you know, the gun barrel sequence, you know, the white dots. That go across the screen and you get the gun barrel and then the white dot, you know, I think in most of these earlier movies, you know, the white mm-hmm. dot moves to a corner of the screen and then it expands into the image, you know, it, it fades into the the image. And this one fades directly to Pierce Bros, you know, fades into Bond. And I, yeah. to me, it was like, that's weird. It, it the movie literally opens on James Bond yeah. and the. I had to wonder, like, is this the quickest we've ever gotten to James Bond in, in one of these movies? Because a lot of times, you know, we wait a minute or two or, you know, sometimes, you know, um, which one was it? Oh, in Dr. No, it, it's like a 15 minute sequence or 10 minute, maybe before we even meet James Bond for the first time. And um, yeah. so I kind of went through some of the or I went through all of the openings of the previous movies from Mar- from Russia with love does open like almost immediately on Sean Connery, but he's playing a a Smirsh agent, you know, pretending to be Bond so that someone else can hunt him, you know, so Red Grant can hunt him. Um, so that doesn't really count. And then Goldfinger, you get him like in the first minute, but it's like because he's he's in scuba gear and he's in oh. the in the water and he's wearing like the duck hat or something. Um, so you get him like in the first minute gold uh, thunderball he's like in the first 45 seconds so like those early bonds you know, are you know are pretty quick to get to him and then all the way into like skyfall it opens directly on daniel craig uh, like stepping into a hallway and then he walks up to the camera and into focus but uh but yeah mo- i mean this this one in this era is the f- only one to like open on james bond so I, it just to me was notable um, because it stood out, but that is probably why I questioned. Like for some reason in my head, I thought that gun barrel sequence was after the cold open. <laughs> okay, 
So maybe that's why I had that thought mm-hmm. is because it went to Bond immediately. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. I'm messing with me. Yeah. But I like the uh, this opening. Like it starts in like some Swiss bank and they're talking, you know, it, it's yeah. all kind of nonsense in the moment. It's it seems nonsense. They're talking about where this money is and yeah. they're trying to, you know, get this money back or exchange. This money is exchanging hands. And um, obviously that deal goes south for Bond. And I like how quickly when it, you know, he explodes this, this uh, his gun explodes creating a d- distraction and then he instantly I, for, I forget how good pierce brosnan can be at playing that uh severe cold and and you know angry bond um yeah. but he's really good at it because he gets in the swiss banker's face and you know he's he's demanding you know the information that he needs and it yeah i just forget how i i think that i I think of of Pierce Brosnan as being just the charming and good looking Bond, you know, not not being the the cold and ruthless, yeah, sort of Bond. But he does have it; like he can get oh, there. Yeah, this movie shocked me in a couple areas where okay. I wasn't expecting him to do what he did. Okay, but I always thought of him as the cheesy one liner Bond. <laughs> okay, see, I, I always give that to Roger Moore. Yeah, you know. I, I think it's because I saw all like I've seen all those now mm-hmm. and like he's still doing it. So I make yeah. it like it almost seems worse that he's still doing it <laughs> than when okay. Roger Moore did it. OK, like <clears throat> he has like, grown out of it. I, 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 it's movies because it, yeah, the movie it's yeah. not necessarily him. It's just. Yeah. OK. There's still like innuendo galore. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> The doctor's name in this movie we meet later on. Her name is uh, Doctor Molly Warmflash. Good Lord, so, I didn't even catch so that. We're still in that era, you know. Like, but, uh, I'm honestly, I was kind of hoping this one would be a bit less Bond okay. than because it's post Austin Powers. Oh, sure. So I thought maybe in my head I was hoping it'd be a little more serious and less. Yeah, you're not gonna get that until yeah. until Daniel Craig, until yeah. Casino Royale. But uh, the the one thing like in this, you know, we're like still setting up this this opening sequence. Like the stunt that he does to get out of this office, he takes the curtain rope oh, and it's like a mile long. It's like it's gotta. I mean, this this building. You know, I I went back and forth trying. They don't. They never do an establishing shot of this building. I'm going to say he's five stories, you know, up. Yeah. Maybe it's four, Minimum. maybe it's six, but so he takes this curtain rope, ties it to himself and, and ties it off to a, uh, uh, unconscious thug in the room and, and jumps out the window. And, you know, so this, this rope or whatever this cord is has to be like 50 feet long, at least. Um, it's, it's, that is one of those that, uh, that's too far you know it's like yeah. i don't well, it's, know it's almost like a mini like fire hose like it's yeah pretty wide it like, looks it, like it telephone like, it looks like data cable you know it yeah. looks like it's uh so pretty tough but like yeah I, I don't know it's it's a weird stunt for them to come up with on like yeah this will this will make sense you know um but, but whatever yeah and um, then i am uh, utterly flummoxed by the money and, okay like all the checks they do and then yeah like, ice makes his fingers bubble and all of a sudden yeah they Eureka. do <laughs> they get to it and they do explain it but it takes a minute um they are scanning the crap out of that money yeah and him grabbing some rocks for his whiskey is what figured it uh-huh. out as kind of I, some they, kind of interaction i guess later I yeah later on they'll explain that the money is all coded in it's a word that. that it sounds like uranium or so, it's like your your urea ure i don't know uh, okay. some word and it was supposed to then be set off by this uh you know this robert king like his lapel pin was supposed to set it off and bond wasn't supposed to be aware of it but because he touched the ice cubes and got some water on his you know, hands. And then because he had touched the bills, like that, yeah, I, 
was a clue. It was a clue for him. Yeah, it, it's all very complicated. And one of those things that if how could you anticipate this going 100 percent correct? You know how? Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, it, it's one of those just it, you kind of just got to roll with it. I know I just said that, you know, the the curtain thing was ridiculous. This is also pretty <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, but then uh, obviously the, the explosion goes off, kills this, this Robert King. Um, and that, that leads bond to a chase, you know, it's, Hey, it's a, it's, this is a solid boat chase. And it, it gets, uh, Q's, I, uh, <laughs> fishing boat. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he would have died like 18 different times during this chase. <laughs> like, yeah. That boat is the most unstable thing I've oh, ever man. seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I know it's a trope, but I love that like somehow the hero can sense the red dot on him. Oh, sure. <laughs> like I feel like could... that happens like two more times in this movie. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah. he he sensed it like in the beginning, even before this. Right. Like, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, this is the second R- time. You're right. Renard uh, saved. Uh, yeah, spared yeah. his life or whatever. We find out <laughs> later, but yeah. But like on this thing, he's gone like sideways like eighty different times, and like <laughs> it's rolling and flipping, and yeah, yeah, um, it's like the bat boat or something. Yeah. It, it looks like something out of Dark Knight, kind of. Mm-hmm. It but, bugged me that, uh, that you know they use it really well. It's got a dive mode that he uses, <laughs> which is the stupidest thing. Well, especially because they he goes into dive mode. I, I forget exactly why or you know what the. There's like a drawbridge that comes down and it's got like well, blockers on it. So he's got to go below the waterline. Okay. And then just after that, something happens. Like she, she drives through another boat creating yep. a, a flaming wreckage. And mm-hmm. so bond has to like reroute and go through yep. the streets. Why, <laughs> yep. at, at that point, why doesn't he just dive underneath the flaming wreckage? You only get one dive <laughs> option, I guess. Sure. <laughs> and why you would dive when there's no like capsule around you is beyond me. I kept waiting for it, yeah, to have a an enclosed thing around nope. him. So yeah. He just goes underwater, fixes time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean it's still a fun opening. Um the you know, the the boat going through the city streets, you know. Yeah. Sure. And, okay. and turning. And turning because yeah. of the jet propulsion, and but and they've the done some rudder. ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, they've done some ridiculous <laughs> stuff with you know. They've driven half of cars like you know around the city yeah. before, and uh, whatever. It made me feel like I was watching um, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, crap, Burt Reynolds movie. Oh sure, uh, Smokey uh, or Smokey the Bandit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep, that's what I was thinking of. I feel like the boat scene was like where he's on land was very smoky in the band. Okay. It felt to me like, uh, and all the jumps, I, I kept expecting, you know, Sheriff JW Pepper to be on, on London <laughs> yeah. holiday and be like, you know, is that secret agent? You know, I, I just, it had that kind of vibe. Like they yeah. wanted to lean into the ridiculousness of it, but, but I mean, it, it was a, th- I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> It ends with a hot air. I don't know. It yeah, was weird. it ends in a weird place because they it's whatever this Millennium Dome in London. I mean, it must have been something preparing for the the Millennium. I don't know. Maybe they were just opening some new. Maybe it's a uh, sporting venue or something. Maybe. Um, so, but it must have been a big deal at the time. So I think it was like, okay, we want to feature this thing in the movie, and for some reason, also a hot air balloon. <laughs> But I I wish that this uh, assassin that he's dealing with here in, in this sequence, I wish she stuck around a bit longer. Yeah. Like, I really liked her. She's she's severe. She's, you know, very like she could have been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's she's really intense. I liked her. So I honestly liked her more than the villain. <laughs> OK, OK. Like the villain was utterly forgettable. And OK. Had like zero stakes. Because mm. he's already dying, so it's like okay, I don't care about this guy. <laughs> yeah, not, I would have much rather been paying attention to this lady than okay, uh, guy that can't feel things. 
Yeah. Like I can't even remember his name. That's how forgettable he is. <laughs> I think it's like Renard or Bernard. Renard, or, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. and that's the, which is another awful name. It's not even a good villain name. Yeah. No, it, that is it's a forgettable name for sure. Um, uh, I like Robert Carlyle a lot, and like he was always the memorable thing for me for this movie. It was like, oh, yes, it's the one with Denise Richards, but it's also the one with Robert Carlyle as the bad guy, and he's really good in this movie, you know, I think. But yeah, I, I can I can see what you're saying because he does play it so disinterested yeah because he is a man who feels nothing so he does kind of he is kind of checked out you know Um, i get that from like a physical standpoint but like from an emotional standpoint is he also right because he's also acting like a teenage boy that's got a crush (laughs) on a girl yeah yeah like i don't know it was just all over the map for me i didn't i did not feel invested in this villain or even his girlfriend that was okay. the true villain. <laughs> I think I so I think one thing for this movie, we already talked about it being a long movie, but yeah. it, I think it kind of hurts it that we don't meet Renard until like an hour into this movie. Oh, it yeah. feels like, you know, and and so much of this movie is built around the inciting incident that happens, you know, months before the movie all about this the the ransom and the kidnapping and ransom of Electric King played by <laughs> Sophie Marceau. And so and that's what the money in the in the beginning is kind of tied to and because we don't get any of that other than like the characters telling us about it, you know, I, I think we I don't I I kind of wish we'd seen some of that. Like maybe give us the cold open where Bond frees Electra, shoots Renard in the head, uh, yeah. you know, and Bond is the reason why he's a cold, emotionless, you know, guy with a bullet in his head. And then cut to present day. Like, so, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't work, but I I think it would have connected it a little better. Yeah. Like, because it was basically like a weird CG head of him was all you got. Yeah. And a backstory plus I, like her crying that after she got away that's all right. i got I, I don't know i i'm torn because i do I, I like that that whole ransom thing is a part of this movie because i think it gives sophie marceau a lot to do you know she can play the scared you know victim you know who got herself out of that situation and but is still like traumatized by it she's got ptsd or you know you find out that's all an act. So that's, yeah. that's nice. I like all of that. Um, but it's, it, I don't know. There's this movie does have a lot. Um, but I think it just confused me more than anything at the end of the movie. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, so he didn't pay the ransom. So what the hell's going on at the beginning of this movie? Cause they say it's like to buy reports about yeah. pi- like, but then she, laces the money so did he try to pay off the ransom because she says he didn't because of m and and i think i I I just got lost (laughs) yeah i think m told him to wait until they Mm -hmm. could create a situation where they could use use the situation to get renard so i think it was more like she the she (laughs) try it too many people. Um, Electra blames M for telling her father to wait, I believe, and, and not just yeah. pay the ransom right up front. Um, I think that's kind of what it is. So, but she it, even says, like, he left, he didn't pay the, like, he left me to die or whatever, yeah, or whatever it was. But he obviously gave money to somebody, some, yeah. I, I don't know. The, the money is because the money too complicated back. in this movie, I don't know. yeah, yeah. Like at first, I was like, okay, he went against her orders at the last minute, and yeah, you know, gave them the money or something. And then she's like, no, he never paid up, and I don't know. I don't was, know. Yeah, because then she used that money to kill him, and she's the one right. that did it. And I, it, like, this movie has like it's so convoluted that it just I was like, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> like, and it I was funny care. because, <laughs> yeah, so the money is does feel complicated. The 
the oil pipeline stuff that gets complicated. And I didn't know that this was going to be a movie about oil until we got yeah. to the, the opening, the, the garbage song, which fantastic song, the, the world yeah. is not enough by garbage is it. It's one of the, <laughs> one of the better, I think bond songs around. Um, no, but I heard in, you call it garbage. Yeah. But until that, you know, credit sequence i didn't know that oil had anything to do with this movie so yeah see all the oil pumps and the weird... yeah so that that's becomes that's, uh that's not know, sexual at all either sure <laughs> but yeah the then after the seek the title sequence it opens on a funeral and the funeral of robert king and then we see electra you know bond is there and then we transition to like some castle in scotland that is now MI6's, you know, temporary base of operations. And this is the scene where they talk about how the bomb worked, how the money bomb worked, and why, you know, Bond touching the ice cubes after the money, like how that all played out. And um, and then because he injured himself in, in the chase previously, like he's not, not a part of this mission, I guess. You know, he's going to have to clear clear it with medical and all that. But obviously, that's not going to stand with with Bond. Um, but it's it's a nice touch, I think, throughout the movie that he does have this uh, wounded, you know, shoulder. So that'll... yeah, you don't know it until he actually touches it. Like, yeah, I completely forgot about it until he like did a Vulcan neck pinch on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Seduces the doctor. Sedu- yeah, gets his medical clearance. I like the doctor is like age appropriate to to bond <laughs> at this point like, you know it, it, it they're a good pair so i had no problems with that and we get the the q scene in this movie which is this one's fun i i, I like this one we saw q earlier when he you know when bond took the boat but here we get a proper q scene um the guy with the, the playing the bagpipes and it just turns yeah. into a machine gun and a <laughs> flamethrower um <laughs> I like John Cleese explaining how a coat worked. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or put your <laughs> right arm in the race. Thus, <laughs> your left yeah. arm, thus. Um, it's it's so, I'm so glad that they they planted the seeds with uh, that boat being, you know, Q's retirement boat. He's going to retire and take this boat fishing. Uh, so they plant that seed there. And then his his like final words to bond is, is, you know, never let you never let him see you bleed. And always, what does he say? Exactly. He's he says, it's like always have an escape plan. Always or that's yes. Okay. I wanted to say, you know, always leave him wanting more, but yeah, it's like have an escape plan and don't let him see you bleed. And then like, we might see Q in that uh, like end scene where they're all pervin on, on uh <laughs> bond on the rooftop. But, this is basically his final scene, and sadly, the actor died died as a result of a car crash a month after this movie was released. Like in December of '99, uh, he of uh, Desmond Llewellyn, you know, got killed from from being in a car crash. Um, yeah, but I like so, a badass. Yeah, right? I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's sad, but I'm glad that he got to have this scene to tee up, you know, that he'd be stepping away and uh, you know yeah you know it, it's it sucks it, but I'm, I'm glad he got kind of an exit you know and that's how it came across i didn't know about the car crash thing. yeah i just assumed he was retiring for real right um, and then that was his exit stage left or whatever yeah um but i i love john cleese i'm i'm a monty python guy so i'm happy to see you know uh a python in this and and he brings the goofiness that you know, it's probably too much, you know, when he gets swallowed by the coat inflatable, you know, hey. balloon thing. And it's, you know, it's it's goofy, but whatever. Avalanche saver. Yeah. Um, they also introduced the uh, the BMW Z8, which is, in my opinion, one of the ugliest BMWs to ever <laughs> be created. Um, it's just I'm, I'm glad when this thing's when this thing gets cut in half. So. <laughs> That was my uh, favorite gadget in the whole movie was the helicopter with the oh, helicopter chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh hell yeah. That's coming back later. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You don't, you don't show us something like that without a, no. a payoff. That's that's Chekhov's helicopter <laughs> chainsaw. 
yeah. I was like, wow, is that wholly unnecessary? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's it's kind of one of those things that's like that that might exist. That might be how you trim <laughs> trim trees, you know, from in in remote, hard to I don't know. It's gonna be a hell of a landing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like unleash that thing before you can land. Uh-huh. Like, no. Yeah. I was like, uh, wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then we get the Renard uh, explanation, you know, talking all about, you know, like setting him up. And, and like I said, I and I like this. Um, I like this aspect of the character, the character who feels no pain, who is slowly dying. I wish they would play that up a little bit. Like, I wish by the end of the movie, he was rough, you know, like actually showing signs of, of almost dying. But because we don't meet him until halfway through the movie, we've only got yeah. a few scenes of him. So there's no time to show any progression of this this bullet killing him. Um, yeah. So I think it's that's just... kind of a mistake. Like, don't tell us he's that the bullet is killing him and... when <laughs> so. he's going to become stronger. <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand. Like... Only because he he has less inhibitions. You know what I mean? Like, there's like. Uh... <laughs> not not physically stronger like he can't lift a you know a no, city bus but like but I, like i had to picture a bullet like slowly <laughs> inching its way and making uh-huh. him stronger and less feeling or less tired like yeah it was the weirdest explanation i ever like i'm like <laughs> it's a bullet it went in and now it's making him stronger <laughs> yeah and then it'll kill him <laughs> i'm like sure thing boss yeah, <laughs> what, yeah. whatever you say <laughs> at no point did I feel like he was a threat. Okay. At all. Hmm. Like basically all his his threat was was he can be shot and he doesn't feel it. <laughs> yeah. But which you it'll think... still stop him. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> I think it's kind of a a real thing. I've heard of people that can't feel pain and then sure. the thing that ends up killing them is like they got like a paper cut and they bleed out. Is like, it or or <laughs> infection from a wound that oh, yeah. they didn't yeah. know they had you know it's something not a strength it's a yeah, yeah. Like, there's a reason why you feel pain <laughs> like, it's like self-preservation he doesn't know yeah. that he's like got like a friggin' gunshot wound in his leg <laughs> and he's like just walking around yeah lead that like it, uh, i despise the whole character okay wow not I, the actor just sure, the character sure. it just yeah, sucked yeah. and he was you know serviceable as a okay i don't know even the henchmen sucked like gold tooth oh guy. yeah goldie uh, yeah and like the best henchman was the one that killed herself at the beginning <laughs> like, yeah yeah and he's not even the villain he's the henchman really right he's the like, it's it's they do the same thing in uh dark knight rises you know bane yeah. he's he is bane in in this yeah. movie like he's not the actual yeah. bad guy so I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. Um, then it it's let's see. We go to uh, Azerbaijan, and this was one of those sequences. I have no recollection of them going to this country, and you know, it's uh, this is where we start to follow Electric King around. You know, she is going to this country because her oil pipeline is in conflict with this little village is like uh holy site, you know so she, i she has to like negotiate like okay we'll we'll move the pipeline to go around instead of i guess bulldozing through it or, yeah yeah going through it and then we get a like her and bond go up to the the mountains and to to ski through it and and survey <laughs> one of the, one of the sites or whatever it's like okay we I, I understand you just want to show us, uh, you know, a skiing sequence. Yeah. Which I welcome because I, we haven't seen this bond on skis yet. I don't think. Yeah. Um, so that was a welcome, you know, fun little action sequence. I thought, um, yeah. but again, just, it was a sequence I had no recollection of. So. Well, isn't this her homeland? Like her um, mom's it's, it's homeland like neighboring. I think she's from Armenia, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, she's, her mom, her mom, and that whole side of the family is from this region. The, yeah. I, I, yeah, um, and then her dad is like some, I guess, some British or you know, some some stuffy, you know, 
British lord. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, I mean, his name is King. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, the the skiing sequence turns into a you know action adventure thing with snowmobiles and uh, a lot of shoot 'em ups, avalanches, yeah. and hey, that coat comes in handy. Yeah, um, sure does. And then I liked her acting in the avalanche. Where yeah. Yes. She was panicked about being trapped. And right. All that. So you thought it was a flashback to being imprisoned and right. Um, you, yeah. And then they go to some casino, I believe. Oh, Steve. Hagrid's Casino. Hagrid's Casino. Yeah. Um, something about like, hey, we're gonna go to this casino because I know somebody that can find out who attacked you and why, or something. Yeah. I think that's what leads us there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we we get Robbie Coltrane's uh, Valentine Sarkovsky, I, th- I think his name is. Yeah, Candy um, Arbor King Extraordinary. <laughs> Polka King of the Midwest. Uh. Sausage King of the. Um, uh, where we saw him in uh, Goldeneye, and I don't think he was yeah. in Tomorrow Never Dies. So it's like it's another one of those like, hey, it's a reoccurring, you know, Bond, you know, somewhat ally. Yeah, um, he gives me Zala vibes from Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah, kind of like. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, let's see. See, oh, and then there was a that kind of strange moment in the casino where electric king shows up and she 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 you know throws down a million dollar (laughs) bet on high card low card and then she loses and bond is like that's weird (laughs) yeah Uh, so that whole scene was weird (laughs) okay i was like okay she seems nonplussed that must have been like some kind of planned event right I, I, I don't know like she didn't even like it didn't register that she just lost a million bucks like, yeah it was just like she was dropping off the laundry i was like okay something's going on there like this movie constantly makes itself way more complicated than it needs to be like i didn't need this whole caviar king sequence like yeah it then alludes to like he's got a nephew in like the Russian, Russian Navy, captain. yeah, and like, I, uh, and I totally was like, "Where the hell is Denise Richards?" Like, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> I, I said, "Yeah, you know, we won't meet Renard for an hour. It's actually more like 45 minutes, but we actually don't meet Denise Richard until what, like, yeah. an hour and maybe an hour twenty, something like that." So, yeah, um, yeah. So it's like, okay, this movie is still going and I haven't seen her yet. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, and honestly, I could have cared less about from here. Okay. Until they got to Denise Richards. Yeah. I, I, like, I, in that's between there, fair... it's, it's like a blank spot to me. Okay. It must not be that lo- much longer be- before we meet uh, Denise Richards because we get a scene like after we meet Renard. Um, we meet you Renard and the he hot rocks and yeah, like, R- the, Renard is meeting yeah. with uh, Electric King's like head of security. Yeah, you know, so now we know that oh, her head of security is working for the bad guy, so that's why she keeps getting attacked. And you know, um, at least that's the way it's presented, obviously. Um, and then and then it takes like forty minutes for Bond to like <laughs> take over the guy that killed the guy that was the guy and is no longer the guy and is now pretending to be sure. this Russian guy. <laughs> and but then bef- it gets to- before all that, you get Bond and Electra in bed oh, yeah. after the, the casino, usual. you know, yeah. and, and a good scene with them. I think they, they're talking about sort of like what she went through and, you know, all that. I, there's, a, there's some line delivery about the world or not. The world is not enough, but um she says that during the gambling. Like, yeah, that's later. Uh, what was it? It's uh, it's something that then like, Renard will say yeah. late. You know, it's some some phrase that she uses. So when she places um, the bet. She's like, "What's the point of living if you can't?" Okay. Like, feel something. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Something along those lines. I, I was <laughs> thinking that that phrase was here, but yeah, I think mm. you're, I think you're right. It was okay. when she was gambling. The okay. Million. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, Bond uh, follows the head of security guy after he leaves, you know, Electra after after they get down. Um, follows the security guy, kills him, uh, or does some snooping first and then kills the security guy, then poses as the security guy, then goes to 
uh, Kazakhstan, you know, yeah. and has to continue posing as the security, you know, head of security or whatever. And then at some point has what to. Are the, what are the shoes? Oh, I don't know. It must be it's like this is some some thing that uh, I could not for the life of me figure it out. <laughs> it has no impact on the story. It's just like. <sighs> If Bond were to pull out the wrong thing out of that bag, he may have been screwed, you know, because it was just a weird thing that those two people would have had prearranged, like, oh, I'll, I'll bring you a new pair of these Michael Jordans, okay. or, you know, whatever. I thought they were I don't know. part of the plan. Like, I was yeah. like, no, I kept it's... waiting for the shoes to show up. Right. Um, <laughs> so at some point, he has to switch being the... Uh, Davidoff, the head of security, and he has to become the, you know, what a uh, Russian scientist. Uh, yeah. You know, so, and then that's what leads to Kazakhstan, where, again, yeah, this gets complicated because it's, we're now dealing with a nuclear warhead that, for some reason, <laughs> they, it's, they above, like it's above ground. Them. Yeah. Okay. And then they take it underground and then they're going to take it out again or, you know, they're going to take it underground to dismantle it. Okay. So if it does I guess go that's off, safer. Okay. It's underground is my guess. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm not a. That makes sense. Nuclear okay. yeah. physicist like Denise Richards, but. Well, right. Um, I took it as a way to safely dispose of like the core or whatever uh, yeah. mechanism that could make this go off. Um, so, yeah. And so then, they're, yeah. They're making all these, these nukes, you know, inert, I guess. Um, Bond gets gets uh, confronted by you know Doctor Christmas Jones, who's who's heard heard all the jokes. So I do like that uh, she says, you know, don't waste your time. I've heard all the jokes, and, he, and Bond, as the Russian doctor, says, I don't know any doctor jokes, which that's funny. He like he's missing the point of he's not making a Christmas joke. He's making a doctor. Yeah. Joke. Uh, I like it, but uh. No, I mean, in this sequence, I didn't have any problems with uh, Denise Richards. You know, I think she convincingly enough plays this character. I'm I'm totally fine with it. I think it's later on in the sub when she's a little, you know, eh. It's, it's weird that she's a nuclear physicist slash, slash action hero. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't the... expecting her to be... Like Laura Croft. Okay. She's what she kind of looks like in this movie. Sure. And <laughs> yeah, short absolutely. And like, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I would expect her to be like almost like Nicolas Cage in The Rock. Okay. Yeah. Where yeah. he's like a biochemist. Yeah. Where he's not an action hero. Right. Until, like, you know, later in the movie, he just sure. has to either do something or not. But, like, straight out the gate, she's like, yeah, she gets out of her, you know, in her element, ra- hazmat like. suit, <laughs> and instantly into Laura Croft, you know, mode. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. it was weird. That, yeah, and then, uh, I'm trying to remember this part. Like, he's got Ren- Renard. Yeah, it, tar- they turn the tables on Bond because uh, this other, is. I don't know. This is where I got confused. Again. This, this gets a little, <laughs> little, yeah, because Renard uh, has to show up and. Like this is where Renard is is planning to, you know, he's got to steal this nuke, and so his people go down. I guess they take out some some of the real people, and so they're posing as you know, everyone's like, you know, you got Bond posing as somebody, you got Renard and his people pretending to be pe- people that they're not. You got you know Christmas Jones who is is suspicious of Bond, and then the army guy he doesn't yeah. really know what's going on, but he's you know. So I like the confusion that it creates once Renard like sh- plays his hand and he's it's confusing enough that he's able to, you know, put the the doubt, I guess, on on over on the bond. So, yeah. And then But this all kind of like when, once we go underground, you know, I, I in my notes, I'm like, what are, what are we doing here? Like, what is, you know, this is a, a chunk of the movie I probably could have done without because you could easily wrap this part up with a line of exposition from M of like, we just found out that Renard broke into some facility and stole a nuclear weapon, you know, last night. Yeah. 
you know, this could have been a sequence that we could have done without. Uh, Electra, which God, I hate that name. Uh, yeah. Lures M to be with her weirdly, which I was like, okay, that's not suspicious at all. <laughs> like, why would M go to her? Like, I don't know. Well, I know that she knew the dad in college, yeah. but like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, because. Yeah, because it's supposed to be the logical one that's like, don't give the ransom and oh, right. let me go and hang out with you while people are after you. <laughs> like, well, but Electra has the benefit of playing the victim here who just lost her father, and it's kind of M's fault. So M is feeling guilty, and yeah, it's like okay, if if Electra wants, you know, she's being protected by MI six anyways. If she wants M to be there. You know, it, it makes it's plausible enough. Like, I don't think it would raise any red flags, really, because they have history. I never got the feeling that she knew Electra. She knew her dad. I assume college, it's but... like, if I know this guy, I've probably met his kid, you know, a hand, enough times to, you know, like, she's not anti, you know, M, but yeah. they're they're they know each other. Then we get our tubular mm. race with a fake sort of bum. Yeah. I, which I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. So like this pipeline rig has a, you know, it's like a some drone that kind of goes through the pipeline that lets you inspect it or whatever. But yeah, yeah it's it, like a service thing, I guess. Yeah. But I'm trying to picture this thing full of oil. Well, I think once, <laughs> like, once it, this is while it's being built. This is not okay. going to stay in here once there's oil. This is just while the, the pipeline is being built. I initially thought that, too. I was like, how is this thing going to work when there's oil? But this, you know, roller coaster wouldn't be here when there's oil present. So it's like inspecting it while they've just built it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously it's got like a a seat area where you can sit there and you can just go through the pipeline and look for, you know, maybe the section isn't uh, coupled together properly or whatever, mm. you know. It's like on a gyroscope for some yeah. reason. So I didn't quite get that. Yeah. To make those turns. <laughs> I guess um, uh, railroads seem to do it okay with the stationary level <laughs> playing field, but yeah. Sure. Make it um, wobbly. Yeah. And a joystick. I think it's it's an okay enough action scene. You know, we find out that someone's messed with this. Uh, they they think that there's a bomb in this pipeline. You know, yeah. with with the nuke, and then they find out it's it's got part of the plut- plutonium. Uh, yeah, it's like make half it. half of the core enough so yeah. that that the radiation would appear, and then yeah. obviously this leads to a a an explosion goes off. And it, it seems like Bond and, and Jones are, are killed. Um, M gets it, taken. Yeah. I like the Electra turn here when when she, you know, turns the table on M and it kills all the people around her and, and takes her. Uh, I really like how she plays that. But uh, I, I think this this section I, I did like, though, once the with this fake explosion, because it makes sense, that, you know, that. We need an explosion that looks like it, you know, was a a partial nuclear, not an entire, not a full on nuclear blast, but you know, um, uh, like keep M in a tower, like I yeah, some. I didn't quite understand that whole plan. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. Why is she supposed to be and... dead at, when the hands meet, and then like, I I don't know what the plan is for M because. You know. <laughs> They're like taking a sub somewhere else. So, what, like, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was going to die in the explosion. And then, I don't know. I, this movie's just so overcomplicated. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and at this point, it is it's like still an, an hour, hour an hour in. to go. Um, yeah. Like, I was just like, this movie will never stop. <laughs> And I already know where we're leading up to. Yeah. Like, there's going to be another Bond capture. He's going to get away somehow. And, you know, Renard's going to get, like... I, honestly, I thought the Renard thing would be better, but we'll get to it. 
it's mostly like emo renard and like i can't yeah. feel things and <laughs> you're my girl <laughs> and then gold tooth takes a briefcase bomb and you think robbie coltrane's bit the dust and then oh the, yeah the docks with the caviar and the chainsaw uh helicopter come back but it's so like I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, yeah, <laughs> when we when we go back to to Hagrid's caviar hut, yeah, that that sequence is like, what are what information are we trying to get from this guy? Why yeah. are we here? Because there are a few of, the, of these that it's like, it's we're just setting up action set pieces, you know, yeah. with a little bit of exposition to make it seem like we're here for a reason. Um, but like, they. I, I, yeah, they I know we got stuff here. But eventually, I don't know they why? Yeah, I did have to. I wrote down a question. You know, like what did Valentine sell to Electra? Like why? What? What information does Bond? What is he looking for here? And after the action set piece, they yeah. do come back around to this, and they do flat out, you know, explain that Valentine had been smuggling machinery um, into Istanbul for yeah. electra so like at least we get an answer but it's like you got to be really you know that's so random <laughs> yeah um so i don't know machinery um, for somebody building a pipeline yeah like, <laughs> okay that's very big <laughs> right yeah um, and then, i think the bigger reveal is that his uh nephew's a captain in the nuclear sub yeah Russia thing or something i don't know <laughs> But how did Bond, um, Bond would have known that? Like, <laughs> right. And it's it's like it's one of those where it's like, oh, this is there's a submarine involved in this movie. Okay, like, uh, okay. yeah, that's another what? thing to hide uh, the okay uh, nuclear signature. Sure. You use a nuclear sub. Sure. Yep. Yep. I buy that. And, um, it's like, God, this thing is so convoluted. <laughs> yeah, because then then we find out that plan is to. They're going to take the the remaining plutonium that they have from the the warhead that they, you know, managed to get from Kazakhstan. Yeah. They're going to bring it into the sub and and introduce that plutonium into the core yeah. of the of the the subs, you know, reactor, and that's going to create you know a cataclysmic you know event. Yep. And then plus we, the other pipelines. Well, yeah, we find out it's going to make that whole Caspian Sea yeah. region. All that is going to be a radio radioactive wasteland for you know however long. Um, thus, making Electra's oil pipeline that goes around all this makes her oil the only you know option. So it is just a a, a scheme to kind of get you know get paid. Um, but it, it, well, and it. I, I don't hate that, but it is a little convoluted to get there. So well, then it's just a pipeline. You can still yeah. get oil. Like you just can't use the pipeline. Yeah. But I mean it slows things down, but you can get tankers and you can get like <laughs> Well, but it also it also raises areas. the price. It, it raises yeah. the price of her oil. So Yeah, but it's not like she's gonna be the only game in town. Like it makes it no. seem like you still got Alaska. Drill baby drill. Sure. <laughs> You got Saudi, you got, yeah. like, I don't know. They, like, uh, I, I did read something uh, I thought was fairly interesting on the World Is Not Enough wiki that talked about um, the idea for this plot. And it was like in November of 97, uh, it says a month prior to the release of Tomorrow Never Dies, Barbara Broccoli watched a news report on Nightline detailing how the world's major oil companies were vying for control of the untapped oil reserves in the Caspian Sea in the wake of the Soviet Union's collapse and suggested that controlling the only pipeline from the Caspian to the West would be an appropriate motivation for a potential Bond villain. So I like that she took that nugget of of something from a few years previous and was like, hey, let's let's turn this into a uh a bond movie so oh man oh yeah so bond goes with uh valentine and they go to like I don't, one of his offices maybe or i don't know where they're at but um they're planning the next move and trying to figure out where where could they be because there's so many ports 
along the perimeter of the Caspian Sea that, you know, they're just trying to figure out where this, uh, where could they could be hiding. And somehow they figure out the tower thing that the M is being held in. Yeah. Um, so. I don't understand how that tied into like, the sub being there. Like, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. whole part, like, I didn't understand. Yeah, <laughs> like he just jumped out the window into the sub, basically from the tower. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it, it all gets disrupted because you know Goldie um, is uh, plays his card. He, he plants a bomb here in this in this place. Yeah, and, and you know we find out he's working for Renard um, or for her. I guess. Well, yeah, for Electra. Yeah, this is where I uh, <laughs> I just wrote down. Uh, little s and m action going on here with the chair of uh mm. neck pain and uh that was the weirdest contraption <laughs> like, i like it though i mean it's <laughs> but it's again it's another bond cliche that you thought like austin powers would have gotten rid of the only difference is she stayed there oh, sh- oh like sure sure for elaborate sure like, just mechanism. put a bullet just pull a <laughs> like, bullet in his head and like scott even done with had it. this movie over in no time yeah <laughs> But I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of cool, like using a medieval torture yeah. device thing. Um, but... I like that we get the uh, um, the the whole the world is not enough. You know, the it gets spoken by Bond because she yeah. she tees it up. She says something, and he says the world is not enough, and that is a callback to um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service when they're dealing with uh, with. Bond pretending to be a genealogy expert so that he can go oh, yeah. and in- infiltrate Blofeld's operation. Um, the the world is not enough is the translation on the Bond family crest. So yep. he says uh, it's a family I, motto or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh Orbis non sufficit. So it translates to the world is not enough. So I, I love that that comes from one of my favorite Bond movies, is you know, the title of this movie and like, uh, yeah, it's uh, I dig that they, you know, are still like referencing stuff like that. So. So, yeah, then they talk about uh, when when she gets him, when she gets Bond in this uh, torture chair, they talk about it's kind of revealed that Renard didn't um, Stockholm syndrome Electra like she turned him. You know, once she realized that her father and M were screwing around with the ransom instead of just paying the ransom, like I thought the reveal was going to be that she orchestrated everything, like being captured and being ransomed. Yeah. I thought was going to be her, you know, trying to get more money or, you know, essentially trying to screw over her dad. But I like that she was legitimately captured and. <sighs> she managed to figure a way out of it. And that involved, you know, playing a long con and, and uh, getting revenge on her, her dad and, and M. Um, so I like the motivation of all that. Yeah, it seems like it was, it's confusing because it makes it seem like she's got a long standing issue with her dad and stealing Which, well, her people's land. And she does, and you know, it, I don't yeah. know. So I think that's why you go that route where she planned everything from the start. Right. It's weird that she goes this drastic this quickly. Okay. Because it's not that much time between her escape yeah. and then world domination of oil. <laughs> like, sure. Like, this is a lot to just cook up while you're kidnapped. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's flimsy at best. I don't know. <laughs> I don't believe half of what's going on in this movie. I'm like, <laughs> She probably had this going for a while, and this is just the excuse. Maybe I don't know. It might. It, may, it like, probably would have just been an easier, easier, you know, story to sell if it was like, oh, she engineered the entire thing. Because she's got like agents in all these other organizations. She's got like, yeah, I, I don't know, like, because it seemed like at least from the movie, she just got like escaped, like right around the time her dad was killed. Yeah, I she, don't know. Like the I'd, have to, I'd have to watch that, well, that those scenes again to find out if they say when that all happened. Because she's obviously at his funeral, so yeah, she escaped before that. I don't know. Yeah, 
it may have but, been uh, a year before it may have been you know months yeah. i get the sense that it was years ago or okay. if not a year you know i don't know That's it weird. is it is vague it's not um let's see i we do get uh let's see when bond is in this torture thing you know he's he's at her mercy and then uh valentine shows up and uh I forgot that he gets killed in this movie. Um, he gets shot by her, and then while he's on the floor, he gets one final, you know, chance to to take a shot with his like cane that is also yeah. a gun. I like that. Um, but I also like that maybe he was trying to shoot Bond because hey, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna take out this guy who's kind of been a prick to me, you know, the last twenty years, like. Or maybe he is trying to save Bond. I like that it's it could go either way. He he managed to save Bond, but he also could have been trying to kill Bond. Yeah, that was weird. I was like, why did you just shoot the lady? Get up? <laughs> like, well, if she shot him, <laughs> Bond couldn't have escaped. If if he shot I guess, her, but then yeah. he shoots the. Lo- I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> I was like, of all the ways that he escapes, it's a random quick swivel shoot the cuff contraption enough like uh, <laughs> i don't know it's, it's so also weird. i mean with this cane gun i think it's going to be a small caliber yeah so you can't do too much damage with it you know and it like took out just but enough it's just enough it. it's just the right <laughs> amount just the right you know to weirdly twist it down it and, just blew I, the I don't know. Whole cuff i think open i don't i don't know because it, it didn't really blow it open because she would have noticed, I would have thought. I think it just, like, knocked it know. enough that he could... I don't know, it was so stupid. I was like, why is this how it is? See, that this must be your uh, curtain rope moment, because, like, this is fine. Yeah, maybe. it was just, like, I don't know. I was like, he's going to escape. I just didn't think it would be that. Yeah. Like, I thought it would be cooler than, like, a random shot by a pellet gun. Like, I don't know. I mean... And then he winks uh, at him, and I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's just, but it does go dark pretty quick afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I was like, "Whoa, dang!" Because what Bond frees M, and then mm-hmm. gets. Uh, how does the scene? How's it set up? Like they're at the top of the tower by a bed, of course. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, he chases Electra up to the top. I yeah. guess. Yeah, and then just. Pl- her. <laughs> yeah, just just shoots her. Like, like it wasn't even like drawn out. It was like, I mean, they had a little conversation, but yeah, I was like, oh, okay, it's done. Okay, <laughs> I, I like that, you know. <clears throat> and then he swan dies head first without his arms into the water and lands awkwardly <laughs> in the ocean. It looked yeah. like he broke his neck uh, <laughs> and swims into the sub because, of course, there's somebody randomly closing the hatch. Still, sure. It's already halfway underwater, but you know. Hey, let's not forget Indiana Jones. You know, boarded oh, yeah. a submarine, and then we never saw him on the sub. Um, let's see the the submarine stuff. It's what the, what I like about it is that it's clearly a real sub, and so they have to make do with like these tight quarters. Yeah. Whereas in the in the previous movie, you got this stealth boat that's like it's it's the size of a warehouse on the inside. They've got room <laughs> for action set pieces and cranes and, you know, underwater drills and like all that nonsense. But here it's it's simply just a, uh, you know, it's not a huge nuclear sub. It's it's I think one of the smaller classes. Um but it's just it's exactly what they need it's it's just this you know nuclear sub that they can use to to do the do all the uh nuclear shenanigans that they want to um but it also affords like nice little close quarters action scenes you know tight little shootouts not these massive action adventure pieces so and flooding rooms and yeah yeah i i think it's well used yeah um I could not for the life of me remember how Christmas Jones, like why they brought her onto the Why they brought sub. her? Um, She's like the one person that could dismantle things. Yeah. So it's like, why the hell did you bring her? I don't remember if they say like, bring her, bring her. It might be, uh, 
Bond needs to cooperate when he's with Elektra. So we're because because we have Christmas Jones, like maybe it's that, like we're gonna hold her hostage. And and it's probably just it's always a good idea to have a spare hostage around, you know. I don't um, even remember her getting captured. It's when Is it when the thing explodes from the suitcase? Yes. Cause that's when Bond gets captured as well. Yeah, because they're they're chasing after Goldie okay. and, and Bond turns a corner and that's he's like okay. he's got guns in his face, you know. So yeah. that's when they get captured. Um and then they know. get separated before Bond gets put on the torture chair. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um uh, but like I said, I like all this sub stuff. Um it's not too much, it's not, you know, it's not over it's not drawn out, I don't think. It was it's funny because they get into a situation where Bond need they're in a, a chamber and they need yeah. Bond needs to get to another area of the sub. So he's gonna have to <laughs> go into yeah. a little chamber, you know, they're gonna have to uh flood it and then uh, let him out of the sub and he's gonna have to swim to another portion. And I thought I didn't get that at all. <laughs> uh, I kept thinking, okay, he's gonna go into this chamber and it's gonna shoot him out like a torpedo. Yeah, well, that's what they were. They were like little torpedo chambers. It looked uh, yeah. like. Yeah, but so they don't shoot him out. But no. later, when the two of them go into yes. one of these chambers, it does shoot him out. So I'm like, okay, I, I got my Bond torpedo. So that's fine. Um, so I thought Renard was in like a nuclear like area that only he could get into because he doesn't feel anything. That would make sense. But then Bond just goes in there, sure. like, hey. I don't want to have kids anyway because I yeah. screw around so much. So let's jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's she's definitely in it too, and I don't know. At this like, point, I, yeah. yeah, it's like they're they've kind of given up on the whole. He's a he's a Terminator who doesn't feel pain. Who's yeah. you know uh, because I also think like like that would have been a good idea. Like have him be the only person who can go into this area because of the radiation. Um, yeah. Like that would have been good. Um, what also I think would have been good is like, like when he gets killed, um, I think like he should have had like a last line that was like, I feel death. <laughs> or like I feel something like in his final moment, like he feels something like, I think that would have been nice. But um, I did like, like, like having watched the HBO Chernobyl show like mm-hmm. i kind of understand what what is going on when he's pushing this uh control rod into the the core of this reactor like it kind of makes sense if you if you watch that show yeah i, I, I don't know i was just, just confused like yeah, i thought like, that would have been awesome like he's melting or something and yeah trying to do this and bond's got to figure out a way to stop it without would, actually that, being in there but <laughs> and that would make sense because if he's a dead man anyway yeah it's like what what better person to to do this than someone who is the only person that could withstand, you know, something like that. But yeah, they don't really play it that way, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, just tells him his girlfriend's dead and he's like, liar. Yeah. <laughs> he goes uh full Anakin Skywalker there. And, well, uh, I, I like that enough because it is like, th- this was all feel. for nothing. This was completely, you know, like my death and all this plan is going to be for nothing. If she's not, enjoying the results of it you know I think he does it anyway <laughs> he's like yeah. screw it i don't know it's just yeah and then i like the hose comes loose and then he so like if that hose didn't come loose then nothing would have happened or because then well, when he puts it back on it stops it. the hose I'm has kinda... to be attached and he does hit a button to send all that air pressure to shoot that rod out and oh, shoot, i missed that it. part okay see that yeah. okay because he fires the the rod into Renard, yeah, he he gives he gives Renard the rod because the air stops it from overheating, and then he presses a button that shoots the rod. Is how I remember it. Like I don't know. Yeah, I think it uses air pressure just to keep the uh, to keep the rod from being fully inserted because yeah. it's like the further in it gets pushed, the the higher the temperature goes, and the more unstable it becomes. So again, watch uh, Noble. Yeah, it's just a weird scene. And then he's like impaled yeah. somewhat, or I don't know. And then they, you know, they escape through their magical torpedo 
uh, sent to the top, of course, exhaling on the way up. That's right. As Bond says. Yeah. His naval commander days coming back for actual use. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, then it's it wraps up like so yeah. many Bond movies. You know, they they surface. Um, I like that there's like a cruise boat going by. And it's like if this if this <laughs> nuclear submarine would have exploded underneath the water, the surface of the water calm as ever. Like there's no, yeah, yeah. you know, there's no explosion. You know, obviously there wouldn't be any like it'd be a safe explosion, but like the water doesn't ripple, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they well, have... it just like kind of splits the sub and it just bubbles. Yeah, yeah. That's the explosion, essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they get picked up and then we go to MI6 and they get to perv on uh, on Bond and, and uh, Christmas as they as they do their thing. Um, we have that totally realistic fireworks in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so bad. Yeah. It's like, yep, you are on a studio lot with lights above. <laughs> I'm trying to see if uh, if Q is in this. I didn't moment. see him. I saw John Cleese. But yeah, I don't think I see Q. I don't think Q's here. I think you know, uh, and, and you know, well, he's taking over, so that makes sense. Yeah, I guess. yeah. Huh. Q's got to so fix that up was the boat. His, his final scene because I kind of thought like yeah. they were setting that well, that previous thing up as his you know, as his exit, but I thought maybe if he was also here, but no, yeah. Um, yeah. So the world is not enough, but it's movie, apparently too much for Patrick. This movie was enough. <laughs> <laughs> like it was over and I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, I didn't care at all. Like it never felt like the world was actually in danger. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and it wasn't world stakes. It wasn't, you know, something like that. It was, uh, it's still a, a villainous scheme to. Well, she said it was going to change the world or whatever. Like, well, sure. I don't know, but... Well, but if you if you think about, I mean, think about the last, I don't know, since 9-11, think about every minor thing that happens that will raise oil prices and raise gas prices, sure. you know? So, her doing this and becoming like the only oil, you know, distributor in this region absolutely would change the world. Yeah, hot take. So, Maybe she would have done the world a favor and we would have yeah. gotten off of crude oil. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm expecting the next Bond movie to have something to do with uh, a uh, cyber uh, attack that. Uh, <laughs> Knocks out computers at hospitals and airports. Oh, wait, that just happened. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure that is a Bond movie with some kind of like yeah, <laughs> cyber yeah. attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was uh, Bond in the little boat that could. That's right. Because that's the picture I'm on <laughs> when I'm on uh, Amazon Prime. Shows oh. him in his little, little tidy little fishing boat. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So oh, you did get a Y2K bug. Yeah. Uh, Drop by uh, yeah, they do uh, mention that R or whatever yeah. his name is. If you're cute, does that make him R? <laughs> Good one, Bond. <laughs> but so uh, yeah, um, woof. <laughs> yeah, see, and and yeah, I I enjoyed this one. It uh, it was just it, so it, long. <laughs> so it stayed in. It was always in my like in my letterboxed you know list of of. Like I've got, I've got a, a ranking of all the Bond movies in my letterbox. Yeah. This one's always been in the bottom five because, you know, I hadn't seen it for so long, so it just kind of, you know, it got filtered down to the, you know, yeah, down towards the bottom. Um, it it remains in the bottom five for me, but to me, it's still like it's the best of the bottom five for me. Um, mm. I think below it, I've got um. I guess the Dalton Bond. <laughs> um, no, I I like the Dalton yeah. Bond. Okay. Um, Most people don't like them. So. Yeah, so it would be this one would be like I said the the best of the bottom five, and then so below this one for me is Spectre, uh, Thunderball, uh, Die Another Day, which is the next movie, but that one could change because I haven't seen that one in so long, so my yeah. my rating might you know move that one around. Um, and then the very last for me is Octopussy. So, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, 
What about what are you what are you thinking for like most villainous and most heroic? This planet, these people, they are nothing to me. You were made to be ruled. The universe is power. You unstoppable power. Come to me, son of Jarrell. Kneel before Zor. And I am that force. I am that power. In the end, you will always kneel. Uh, it, it was hard like there wasn't that much villainy in this yeah it was kind of just threats a lot of yeah. a lot of threats yeah like uh, i guess like the most villainous is that she killed her own dad but yeah aside from that it was all pretty much standard bad guy versus good guy stuff right like there wasn't anything too egregious going on, like over the top, other than King's death, really. Yeah. But, um uh. I'm kind of there too. Like there's there's nothing I could put my finger on that is like, you know, I mean, she's evil, I guess, you know, she's but she's I mean, well She's not even evil, evil. She's more like greedy. Yeah, but he does. Vengeful. He, yeah, and he does say to her at one point, like, "You know, is killing eight million people, yeah, worth it, or, or something like that." Um, and so she's cold about that. Like, she has no emotion about, you know, no problems with with doing that. So that I guess is kind of my most villainous is just like her willingness to to do whatever it takes to to carry out this plan. I see. I already forgot that that many people would die from this okay. submarine explosion. Because, like, okay. I don't know. To me, a submarine explosion seems like it's pretty remote. But well, but again, I, it, this is a nuclear expl. You know, meltdown. Like, not a. Not yeah. a. This is uh, just a, a submarine exploding. This is a nuclear event. So so. It's more like pollution. I mean, yes. yeah. It's it's going to be fallout. You know, it's going to be a, a nuclear blast plus all that what comes with that. You know, oh, so they're going to surface, and then that's blow. why they wanted the the sub to stay at a certain level. Okay, okay, yeah. So like we've let off a bunch underwater before. Again, so. it's it's <laughs> yeah. it's too convoluted at times. Yeah. Like so, you, those details are easy to to lose. You know, I think I lost that because Bond's trying to get it to surface. Yeah. Well, and manages to, to, to get, yeah, think uh, it, which I, I like that. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, what about heroic? I believe there's a hero in all of us. I just finally know what I have to do. That keeps us honest. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. Gives us strength. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. Makes us noble. And I know in my heart that it's right. I guess when he saves M from the cell. Okay. Um, he kind of like stops chasing the bad yeah. lady and goes and gets uh, his old lady out of prison. I like that he does that, but he doesn't stop the chase. It's like no, he, yeah. he frees her and, and moves on, you know? Yeah. Mine, I think, is right before that. It's when uh, Valentine... Like uh, uses the cane, like you, you know, uses his last moments to save Bond. Or did he? Or did he? <laughs> so, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. Like it wasn't like overly heroic or evil. It was just kind of, I was whelmed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it, it was yeah. there. And I see, and I was, you know, like I said, I was kind of the exact opposite. Like to me, going in. I mean, I, we both went in with fresh eyes. Yeah. But for some reason, yeah, this one played a little bit better for me. I think if I had rewatched it this morning, like you did in, in preparation, maybe it would have dragged a lot more. But watching it the first time, yeah, I mean, I was kind of with it the entire way. But obviously, in thinking about it, it's like, yeah, there's definitely chunks of it where I was kind of checked out. It was, oh, and yeah. I, I was pausing. That was my problem. I was pausing. I was going and taking breaks and, you know, uh -huh. doing all, you know, made a sandwich halfway through. So it was like, it was an easy kind of uh, journey through this one. I just kept forgetting what I watched. Like, I was okay. like, all right, what did I miss? I, I missed something. Like, yeah. I forget I what it was now. But... Didn't keep my attention. Yeah. 
but yeah. Uh, what would you rate it? Uh, I'm gonna rate this a solid two. Okay. I was like, I, I will never watch this again, <laughs> and it like actively made me not want to watch Bond except for yeah, uh, Daniel Craig. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I mistakenly had better expectations going because I thought they were gonna tweak it a bit because of Austin Powers. Sure. So I thought it was going to be a bit more, and it was a bit more serious than that he cold blood shot yeah. the girl. Um, yeah. But it still had the same tropes that Austin Powers was making fun of. And right. Like the plot was just, oof. <laughs> uh, but yeah, two. Right on. I liked it enough to give it a three. Bottom five of 50 Bond movies. <laughs> it's it still a three. three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that tells you like I, I, you know, I, I probably rank Bond movies, you know, probably a lot higher than than maybe some of them deserve. But uh, I think that's my problem. I just am not a Bond person. Yeah. In general, like I didn't enjoy the like as a kid. Yeah. Uh, Pierce Brosnan would have been my Bond. Sure. And I just didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like he seemed like an old dude. And <laughs> I mean, they were, they were, you know, these movies were for our dads. You know, these were yeah. like you, either going to watch a, a Tom Clancy, you know, a clear and present danger or a hunt for red October, or you can get a bond movie yeah. or, you know, it's like they weren't, they weren't for us, you know, growing up. So what bond needs isn't like, uh, like a 30 to 40 year old guy. Yeah. They need it. Like, and this is why I liked it so much was Kingsman where it's mm. like a young guy. I bet the next bond we get will be late twenties, early thirties yeah. bond, and it will appeal to a younger audience because it'll yeah. be Bond Begins, you know. Yeah, it'll be like, Kingsman. Like half the time, I'm like, "There's no way he's doing this." <laughs> like, right. He is not in his physical peak anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're they're gonna have this... to pump a lot of fresh blood into the next, you know, round of these. So. How old was Craig when it ended? Was he like in his fifties? Yeah, late 40s? Um, I'm betting he, he was Craig got late. old. <laughs> he he also had one of the longest ten years as Bond. Yeah. He started in 2005. Uh, well, Casino Royale came out in 2006, but it you know he would have been filming in in 05, and that only just ended in. Uh, no time to die was 2021. So, what is that? 15 years of Bond, and yeah. that is like that rivals uh, Roger Moore. Moore. Yeah, you know. So yeah, he aged. <laughs> Another old. <laughs> and it's it's funny because Casino Royale is set up where he becomes a double O yeah. at the end of that movie or at mm-hmm. the beginning or whatever. So it's like he's becoming, you know this agent and so he's already like 40 something you know at the start of casino royale so it's like (laughs) yeah it he's no i don't know but at least he is physically imposing yes yeah yeah yeah. whereas pierce is like i don't know like uh executive at a sure uh, it's a different uh, era you know it's we're in the 90s still and, and and obviously it's like we're coming into the two thousands and and like this type of leading man is changing and, you know, he's getting by the next one. It's, it is a little bit like, okay, they should have probably pivoted because of the Austin powers of it all. You know, Mm -hmm. they were still kind of in this, uh, they probably still had Pierce, you know, on, on uh, contract, you know, so probably kind of like, we kind of got to still use this guy and tell these, these stories. (laughs) We can't change it wildly, you know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's more to come, but <laughs> one one over. more of, of these, <laughs> um, which you know is one that came out when Amanda and I were together, and we I saw know. that one in theater. We owned it on DVD. We watched that one f- regularly enough. Um, that was one we we liked watching that one. So I've got a lot of memory, you know. Sure. Not nostalgia, but like, you know. It's a sense of memory. It's yeah. Kinda... Yeah. But then I haven't watched it, you know, in a long time. So yeah, that'll be an interesting one to revisit when we get to that. But next, 
Next, next uh, is yes. we're going back to Star Trek. One In of the best, sense. one of the best <laughs> Star Trek movies ever made up until you know a certain point. But uh, yeah, it's time for Galaxy Quest. Yeah, hey, I'm looking forward to that one. Hell yeah! I've seen that one more recently. Okay, uh, like I own that one. Yeah, it's been several years for me. I mean, yeah, it's... not ten years, but mm-hmm. you know, that's probably been two years. Okay, for me. Yeah. Like it's not I mean, that long. Yeah, it, that is that's gonna be a fun one. So yeah. Like I uh I'm looking forward to really uh reviewing uh what's his name? Tony Shaloub. He's always the standout for me because I don't get that character. Yeah, because I I always hear about him, but I never really paid attention to him mm-hmm. that much other than he's weird. Mm-hmm. But I'd never really kept an eye on him. Like I think so he's kind of looking the forward one... to looking at him. More. Okay. I think he's the one part of the movie that doesn't work for me. Uh, yeah. Because I don't think that what he's trying to do, like what character he's trying to play, I just don't think works. Yeah. That's but... the one guy I could never figure out. So I really yeah. want to keep an eye on him to see if maybe I'm just, yeah. Yeah. If there's some like nuance behind the scenes that I never, because I wasn't looking at him, I didn't pick up yeah. on. But yeah, he's a bizarro character. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I just was like, thoroughly fascinated to see yeah. why because i've heard people talk about him yeah. in this movie and i'm like really <laughs> I'm like okay but maybe i'm missing something yeah so we'll see yes we will and is that the end of 99 that'll be the end of 99 wow end of a millennium that's right and then Jeez. 2000 is going to be a, a pretty quick set of movies there's only four that we're going to cover in 2000 I don't know why I thought X Men was in the nineties, right? I mean, I know the cartoon was, but yeah, yeah, maybe that's why I thought it came like mid because it's the cartoon. I think because it still feels like it's a nineties movie. I mean, it's everyone is that whole black leather sort of uh, yeah. aesthetic, you know, where it kind of starts in Blade and and you know the, the Matrix mm, and, and all yeah, that. that. Like that's, that's why, yeah. yeah, that's why you think of it as being a nineties movie. Well, that's probably it. Yeah, for yeah. some reason I thought the first X Men was like ninety nine, but yeah, nope. Why didn't we cover the Matrix? Oh, yeah, that's a good call. It is a comic book. Yeah, now. I mean it's it is it has roots in comics. Um, or was it a comic before the movie? I just it was it was that's kind of been a not a controversy, but. <laughs> some of the rights are like some of the original. There's like some French comic book that is very apparently is very much like the, the story of the matrix. And so there's mm. been some people say like, well, the Wachowskis just took that comic book and made the matrix. So, uh. so it has roots in comics. It's not a direct adaptation of whatever that book was, but yeah. Yeah. So it's, Hey, we could squeeze it in after we, galaxy class. We could, I, I wouldn't, the only, <laughs> my, the thing that I always say about the Matrix is that I'm I'm always up for watching the first Matrix movie. <laughs> yeah. But that makes me want to watch two and three. And then by the time I get to the end of three, I wish I hadn't watched the first one. <laughs> you know, or I wish I had only watched the first one. But oh, because yeah. that first one ends with like I want more, you know, mm-hmm. and then when I get more, I'm like, I I didn't want this you know i yeah. should have just been satisfied with one you know that's my that's my yeah. feeling on the matrix franchise is that we should have stopped at one so yeah. um, but I, i'm i'm fine to we'll, let's let's add the matrix i like in, the newer matrix that was I, I haven't seen it yeah so yeah we'll do galaxy quest and then we'll squeeze in the matrix uh i don't know what time of year it came out but we'll just throw it on the end of 99 for because we can so- I felt like it was late summer, maybe, but probably a summer, yeah. So, because I remember it around the time of Blair Witch, okay, for some reason, okay. So, yeah, we'll do that then. But, uh, yeah. I think that'll do it for now. So, until then, stay safe out there, citizens. you were so sure was real.
What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? What is happening to me? The answer is out there, Neo. It's the question that drives us. What is the Matrix? The Matrix is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? They're watching you, Neo. Human beings are a disease. You are a cancer of this planet. And we are the cure. Get me the hell out of here! Welcome to the real world. So you're here to save the world. So what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. Buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. Because Kansas is going bye-bye. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Find the show on Facebook and Twitter at Real Comic Heroes. All music and audio are the property of their respective creators.